Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be talking about an, uh, an example problem involving an equilibrium wave equation solution. What we're going to be talking about, of course, is the sag string under tension. So sagged, and this is due to gravity. But let's first go over the wave equation. The general wave equation is going to be rho, the mass density of the string, times utt is equal to the tension of the string, th, times uxx, the sp second spatial derivative, plus f, which is going to be an applied force. This is actually going to be a pressure, because it's going to be force per uh, unit uh, space. Okay. So this is your, your, your wave equation in the most general form. And that, of course, is that applied. And this is non-homogeneous uh, uh, pressure. So of course, we're looking in equilibrium. So, and of course, that means, of course, there's going to be uh, no acceleration. So we're going to have UTT is equal to 0. Also, of course, we're going to have boundary conditions. Because we're talking about a string that's anchored, so we're going to have fixed boundary conditions. So u of x comma uh, t, where x is going to be 0, it's going to be equal to 0, and u at l comma t is equal to 0. All right, so f, the f we want to talk about is actually the force due to gravity. Okay, so in this case, that pressure is going to be F is equal to rho, the mass density, times G. But because we want gravity to be pointing down, we're going to make it negative like that. Okay, so again, after we take UT, T is equal to zero, what we get is zero is equal to TH UXX plus but we're not going to do plus, we're going to do minus rho g. So it should be noted, of course, that this is a constant. So that'll be a constant there. Okay. And because we're no longer talking about a partial differential equation, but an ordinary differential equation, it suits us to then take uxx and turn it into a u double prime. And of course, that's just simplifying and kind of cleaning up the notation a bit. So this is the equation we want to solve, subject to the boundary conditions that are anchored to some point at zero. Okay, so let's solve. So what we have here again is th u double prime minus rho g is equal to zero. Uh, u at zero is equal to u at l is equal to zero. So all we have to do is go, let's separate, put the derivative on one side. We're going to have a rho times g over th there. And then we integrate. And we get u prime is equal to rho times g over th times x plus c1. That's that free parameter from integration. And of course, we integrate one more time. And we get u of x is equal to rho times g over th time, uh, with a 2 in the denominator there. Now x squared plus C1x plus C2. And those are our integration uh, constants from, uh, from you know, performing the, uh, the two integrals. Right now, of course, we have to look at the boundary conditions. So U of 0 is equal to 0 plus 0 plus C2 is equal to 0. So now we know that C2 is equal to 0. So we can kill that off from our problem. And finally, U at L, the other length, end of the string, is going to be rho times g over th times 2 l squared plus c1 l and that's equal to 0 so we should be able to solve for c1 is going to be equal to negative rho g over th times 2 uh, times l after we divide out there so we found our other parameter now we can put this all together we have u of x is equal to uh, rho times g over th times 2 in the denominator there times x squared minus rho times g times th over 2 uh, times l x 
and that's it. There's our function. Uh, we can do a little bit of simplification here, though. It looks like I can factor out uh, a factor of rho, uh, of rho g and a th and a 2 there, like that, and a factor of x, and then we're left with x minus l there. And clearly what we have here is an upward uh, facing uh, parabola uh, that, of course, is always uh, negative uh, for x in the 0 to l non-inclusive range. All right, so if I had a picture of this, it would look like a sagged parabola, and that's why I call it a sagged a string under the force of gravity. And the maximum point at l over 2, that's the, or sorry, the minimum point, I should say, uh, is where you're going to have the most sag. Of course, this is a pretty natural solution. I'm sure anyone who's tried to hang a clothesline or stretch any, you know, cable across two anchor points, you're never going to get all of, there's, there's always some mass in, in that cable and gravity is going to be pulling down. It will always create some sag. What's important here, though, is to note that that okay what happens if i if i look at the parameters now what we have here is a row parameter we also have that th parameter okay what's going to happen there so clearly row if i increase row increase of course we're going to have more we're going to have more sag obviously because it's an enumerator it's going to enhance the amount of sag so a more dense cable is going to sag more. Okay, if I t take TH and increase that, if I, t if I increase the tension on our, on our elastic uh, cable, of course we're going to get less sag. Just as you'd expect, and it's also just as you'd expect from looking at the formula. It's in the denominator, the tension is, and so it's going to be undercutting whatever that force of gravity is doing. Okay, so those are really neat phenomena that show up from this sag string. Uh, I hope this example just demonstrated how the mechanics of the wave equation and also how all the parameters work together to find these uh, uh, non uh, um, uh, uh, these non homogeneous equilibrium solutions to the wave equation. Okay, so uh, I will leave this video now, and I'll hope to see you soon in the next video.